you know, we learn X amount or certain percentage. I think it was 10% of what we, what we hear and then 20% of what we, what we hear and see and then 50% about what we talk about and then 90% of what we teach other people. Yeah. Anyway, that really had an impact on me when I was 20 something years old. I just thought, man, we, I got to figure out a way for these kids, these young people to be active, right? To really be active and have a student centered um, approach. So just having said that, you can see a couple of pictures here. This uh, one on the one on the left is from one of my AP macro classes. And then on the one on the right is from a from a college prep class, actually a collab cl class with uh, Miss Adley. So the gradual release concept and visible learning that we've been talking about up to this point has uh, can work at any level, right? It can work at any level. Um, to me, I always say like the, the, the content is the backdrop, right? The strategies are what matter. So anyhow, this uh, gradual release and video creation, that's going to be our focus for today. I'm going to start with that, our learning target or success criteria. Like I said, I'm a big believer in, in active learning strategies, right? Active learning, student-centered. I'm going to talk about my philosophy real quick in the next slide. But this is effectively what we're trying to learn, okay? We, we I, you, I will know how to incorporate gradual release. We'll talk about what that is in a second. Into videos using various video platforms. Now, today, the only thing I was able to get through is the Google Meets, but I have a video for the Google Meets, how to record that, and a video how to do all the editing on iMovie, um, which I'll show as well, and I'll have Miss Elam share that with you guys, as well, as well as the sample video that I'll show you as well, okay? So we got a bunch of stuff that, that I can access as a resource. So capture and edit videos, and then we're gonna create an assignment in the Google Classroom, okay? So we're gonna do all of those things. Okay, success criteria. Here, here's the thing. Like I said, I'm a believer in active learning strategies. I'm believe, a believer in student-centered learning. Everything that I do in my classroom is that way. So we are very active in our learning, okay? So here's the thing. We are going to do some creating today. We're not just going to listen to me talk for an hour, okay? I would never make my students do that. I don't like doing that. So what I need everybody to do is to grab a Chromebook. I've got some in here for you guys. Use the bottom ones. They weren't touched, I don't think. Or if you're on the computer, you obviously are on a computer. So use that. If you, like I had some people um, the last uh, session that were coupling up together, you know, if you can get on a computer, that'd be great because we're going to produce. We're not just going to be passive learners today. So what is gradual release, right? So gradual release is a way for us to progressively and systematically um, disseminate and actively engage in, in the retention of information, right? It's a way for us to, um, again, progressively disseminate information, have the students become engaged, and then check for understanding and provide feedback, okay? That's really all it is. So I just thought of this slide before I started today, and I put it up there. Show them, let them do it, and then let's talk about it, right? Show them, let them do it, and talk about it. Now, I have on the, on the, on the picture here on the slide, um, an engine with somebody working on the engine. Hang on one sec. There we go. Now, here's the thing. For me, I have no idea how to work on cars. I have zero idea. I know how to clean cars. I know how to put maybe gas in my car. I know how to uh, uh, maybe put oil in it or something like that. But I do not know how to work on cars. I could sit in this classroom for the next 20 years, and you could tell me how to fix an engine, how to replace belts, how to change oil. And I promise you, if I walked out of the room, I would not know how to do it. I would not know how to do it, right? You could do that as long as you want. So what do I need to do? I got to do it. I got to fix the car, right? You got to get me in there and work on this thing. Um, I like to say that, uh, again, um, we need to have these kids being active, okay? They got to do it, right? No matter what the subject is. Uh, when I was uh, coaching football, and I coached football here for 13 years and pretty much 19 years of my career, I used to say the football coaches and athletics in general probably show this more than anything because it's constantly, hey, here's what we're going to do today, guys. I'm going to show you how to do this technique. I'm going to show you how to put your hand on this guy's hip and run with him and be in phase, right? And then we're going to do it. And I'm going to see that you can do it, okay? And it's like the, the athletic arena um, is, is, is all about teaching, okay? And maybe a lot of people don't think that, but it is. 
Okay, but anyway, um, so back to academics. As far as building the engine, you know, what do we have kids do? So this is uh, from a, a lesson that I did with my AP kids, and I do this with my college prep kids too. A couple years ago, this picture was taken. Some of you might recognize these guys. But I, in this lesson, we have to introduce a pretty, I don't know if it's complex, but it's definitely abstract economic model. Okay, and so I could just lecture on that model. I could just, you know, go through it and show it and graph it and everything. Or I could have the kids do an assignment, do an activity where they actually produce something. And then throughout the assignment, we are going to constantly kind of like debrief so that they're getting the teaching points and the learning points as we go. And so this assignment is called Links and Smiles. And basically what they're doing here is they're, and you remember this, Ms. Chitty? You either, you, so you remember that? Yeah, so they're going to be producing two things, and they kind of see, hey, you know, I've got limited resources, and I can only produce so much of one thing or the other. But anyway, the point is that they're getting active learning. And so Ms. Mongero remembers it too. Awesome. But uh, anyway, um, so then at the end, they're like, oh, yeah, this graph makes sense. Okay, again, don't tell me how to teach. I mean, to, uh, yeah, don't tell me how to teach. <laughs> don't tell me how to fix the engine. I have no idea what you're talking about until I fix it. Okay. All right, now let me show you kind of a finished product and what. What I'd like you to see is sort of like what I created, um, because what what our real goal here is how do we get gradual learning concepts into a distance learning or a virtual learning format? That's hard, right? Like, how do you check for understanding? How do you have the kids uh, perform the we do work period function of 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 our gradual release, right? Like, how am I going to do that in the classroom? It's easy. I can see it. I can talk about it. We can debrief. We can discuss. They can do. We can, you know, assess. It's super easy. But how do we do it online, right? And that's, of course, what we're uh, what we're moving toward. All right. Here's the video um, that I created for my first sort of um, video lesson for the kids. All right. Now, anybody that knows me knows that I use Tickle Me Elmo for um, introduction activity day one of economics. So what you see here is me. Um, you also see is some of my PowerPoint here. So this is my activator, right? And so as we're going through this, you're going to see, you know, I'm, I'm kind of introducing the subject. You know, this is a little bit of a lesson. I'm showing a picture of me when I was 19. I worked at Babies R Us, if you didn't know that already. Um, here's my, you know, PowerPoint, um, you know, just different pictures, uh, you know, sample stuff. And then, you know, you're looking at this and you're going, okay, cool. This is a little bit of a lecture. But then what we're going to do is there's some pictures of my family. Then what you're going to do is we're going to get to a point where the, I'm going to tell the kids, I'm going to say, look, stop the video or pause the video and let's go ahead and access this assignment and let's complete it, okay? And then what you're going to do, uh, student, is once you're done with this, then we're going to go over it. We're going to debrief. We're going to talk about it. And if you were going to watch this video of me, you would see uh, me doing that. Okay. All right. So anyway, this is the video. This video goes for about 20 minutes. It's not super long. If you're talking about a 90 minute period, that's about right, right? 15, 20 minutes. And in intermittent within this video are lots of opportunities for them to engage. So like, here's another one where I would say, stop the video, you know, plug in your answers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there's, there's a lot of stuff in here, but at the very end of this video, and I'll probably reference this again, what you'll see is a summarizer. I'll go through the whole thing that we started again, okay? But anyhow, let's let's go back to where we do, because this is a lot of I do, you know? And I want you guys, teachers, we need to do. So let's go to that. Right. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a, um, basically what I'll call this is like an introduction slide for the students. And that's actually what you're looking at, but here it is right here as well, okay? So what is this? This is basically a way for them to have a reference point of what it is we're working on and then what it is we're trying to accomplish, okay? And at the very end of this uh, training today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have you actually um, attach this to the Google Classroom. So it's pretty cool. You'll have a chance to like, again, what are we doing? We're trying to gradual release within a distance learning format, right? So the kids are gonna have access to all this stuff and we can, we can both um, assign it and collect it virtually, it's pretty neat. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is we are going to go to Google. Let me kind of, step two, let's go ahead and go to our drive, drive, okay? Now, what we're going to be creating is an introduction page, okay? So what we need first and foremost is we need to, um, we need to find what we're gonna be teaching. 
So what I, what I want everybody to do right now is to think about the, the thing you love teaching the most. What is the, your favorite thing to teach? Okay? And then what I want you to do is I want you to go and I want you to get the standard for that thing. For instance, mine is, um, is uh, let's just say, define scarcity. Here's mine, SSEF1A. Define scarcity as a basic condition that exists when unlimited wants exceed limited productive resources. So what I'd like everybody to do is go ahead and grab a standard. Okay, I'll give you a couple of minutes to find one. All right, let's go ahead and start creating. Okay, so I want everybody to go ahead and on your Google Drive, click New. Okay, and then once you get to New, you're going to click on where it says Google Slides. So what we're going to be creating with the Google Slides is a a uh, an, a product or an artifact or document for the kids to be able to access easily. And again, we can attach this to the Google Classroom but then also for them to be able to interact and provide feedback, okay? So we're gonna go to Google Slides, go ahead and open that up, okay? And then, you know, what is your um, standard, okay? If it, was, if it was, I need to be able to distinguish between the three branches of government, then my title would be something like the three branches of government student feedback. If I uh, do citations or references or something like that, this would be citing evidence and uh, referencing using a particular whatever feedback form. So it's gonna be based upon your topic. Now today I'm gonna select something on opportunity cost because that's a central thing in economics, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and title this opportunity cost feedback form, okay? And this is gonna be again for the kids. So go ahead and create your titles. I'll just do it right at the top. Yeah, so this is gonna be my main uh, my main slide here. Now you can see that was a little the text was a little bit large there, so I kind of made it a little bit smaller. But I've got my title here, and you can title it whatever you want. I, this is just my thing. I don't, you don't have to call it feedback. I, whatever you want to do, I just what I call it. All right, it doesn't have to be what I'm doing. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our learning target. Now remember. A learning target is what the kids are supposed to be learning, right, for that day. So, like, what are they going to know, okay? So, like, I'm going to say, all right, I know, I, the student, I know how we've got this problem in economics, and it's called scarcity. And scarcity forces us to make decisions. Now, I don't need to read all this, I guess, to you guys, because you're going to be creating your own, okay? So, go ahead and you create your own as I create mine, and I'll be quiet. The learning target for me is, or for the student, is what they are going to know, okay? So that's gonna be the focus of it. Now, notice I got a bunch of words here, but the big thing I have is, is what they're trying to learn, and that is about opportunity cost. Now, success criteria, let's go ahead and put that in. Success criteria is how are they gonna show us they know this, right? And that's our responsibility. We gotta provide them vehicles to provide that understanding and really to show us that they know what, what we're talking about. Okay, so. These are I can statements because that's like saying I can do this. I can do a graph of supply and demand. I can analyze the PPF and tell you what the costs are. I can provide examples of citation using the a APA style or whatever, you know. I can, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my I can statement. You guys go ahead and do yours as well. Now, again, uh, with me, you know, I like to format it a certain way. So you see me kind of playing around with it. I always like to have different colors. I'm just sort of make it look cute, you know? So I'm gonna do these colors here just to sort of jazz it up a little bit. You don't have to do this, so I like to do it. It just kind of pops, you know? Make it pop a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna put a picture on here just to, again, I, I, I believe you can do PowerPoint by death a lot of times, or death by PowerPoint, I said it backwards, and just give them text upon text upon text. Let's make it look cute, all right? That's, that's kind of how I think about things. I always try to do something like that. So I'm gonna type in my keyword, which is opportunity cost. I'm gonna go find a picture, make this thing look nice, right? Okay, so here we go, I got one. Okay, maybe you're typing in um, three branches of government, maybe you're typing in, you know, Glen Academy, uh, graduation retirements, maybe you're typing in, you know, uh, language arts, whatever. And you can format these pictures, make it however you wanna put a drop shadow. There's different features here. That's not really the crux of what we're doing today, but. Okay, and you know, maybe I'll add some more stuff here. You know, guns or butter, that's a classic choice making thing in economics. All right, so I got it jazzed up a little bit, make it look nice. Okay, how are we doing in here? Good, how are we doing online? Everybody good? 
Good. Cool. Thank you. Thank you for the validation. Awesome. All right. Okay. Now, here's a cool little thing. Everybody see up here in the top left where it says untitled presentation? Do y'all see that? Okay. If you just click on this, it will automatically put whatever your title is in that little box. So it's hard to zoom in on here. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But if you click on it, it's automatically going to title it. There we go. Remember? So I've got that done. Let's go ahead and add another slide. Now, you can click this little plus button. I always just hit enter like so. And what I want to create here, let me go back to my video for a second. What I want to create here is my first somewhat application of information. In other words, I want them to show me that they know what it is they've learned in the first nine minutes of my video. Okay? I want them to do the we do part. And then I can provide some feedback. So this little application thing right here, that's what we're going to create. Something like that. All right, so you see it in my video here. Let's create one. Now, remember, this feedback form is for them to access, to give us information to, so that we can check them and we know what, we're talk, what they're talking about. All right, so here I'm going to type at the top of this thing, application question. Now, you don't have to call it application question. You could call it, you know, uh, I don't know, a do now, or you could call it a activator, or you could call it, you know, um, a we do feedback, I, whatever. I just call it application because it's showing that they know what they know. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and give this a little bit of instruction. So what is it I want them to do? Now, before you guys start doing anything, let me show you what I do, and then you can kind of interpret it and see if you want to do it. But I'm going to have them do this. Now, I've already got this done, so I'm just going to copy and paste real quick. I'm going to have them on a three-column chart table to fill in some information, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and insert a table. And I'm going to have to adjust this a little bit. But I'm going to insert a table. And this table is going to, going to provide them with an opportunity to fill out some information. OK? So in my table, what they're going to be doing is they're going to be analyzing choice and decision making. Now, if you were doing a, like Coach Winkler in here, he's doing citations and references. I don't know if you're using APA or whatever you're using. But you could have a table that says, <clears throat> Is this correct, right? And then in the next uh, column, it could say yes or no. And in the next column, if it was wrong, they had to fix it, right? That'd be pretty cool, right? Okay, so anyway, here's mine. I'm just going to kind of go through it, and I'll show you how I do it. So what they're going to do is they're going to talk about decision-making. And my lesson is all about, you know, the fact that, look, we've got limited resources. Like, whether your resources are things that you produce uh, from natural resources or just time. Like all of us have limited resources. And so because of this problem, we have to make choices. Like today, we uh, came to, to work, right? Now, I know everybody online and everybody in this classroom that's going through this tutorial, there is no other place you'd rather be in the world than at Glen Academy High School, right? Emphatically, they're saying right in this classroom, right? Everybody is so excited to be back, okay? Um, but obviously, there's a lot of things that we could do as alternatives. So what I want to be able to do is I want us or my students to be able to write some options here, like what alternatives that they would like to, you know, they could have done other than go to school or work. And then because we don't have unlimited resources, we have to make choices, and those choices have costs, and that's what's going to go in this third column. This is okay, now I want to show you guys something real quick from a finished product, kind of jumping around here. But bear with me. Notice on this one, it says click to add text, right? And so what there's a way for us to do it such that they can just click in this box and then fill out their answer. Like, oh, I could have gone to the beach. I could have gone, uh, you know, snowmobiling. I could have gone, you know, to the uh, polar ice caps. I don't know. Something like that, right? Now, how did I do that? Because up here on my other one, there's nothing there, right? Like, there's nothing there. So how did I do that? All right, let me teach you how to add those little boxes for them to fill in, okay? So everybody, again, what I need you to do is click plus right here and get another slide open. Okay, so now I got the box. Everybody have it look like that? I got to copy this thing, okay? So I always just hit Control-C, but you can also right-click 
and click copy. We got to copy it. All right. Now go back here to your second slide and paste it. Okay. When you paste it on there, it's going to look kind of messy. So you got to clean it up, right? You got to drag it into these boxes. Now, this is just something that I think is good for the kids to have somewhere where they can actually, you know, type into and it doesn't get all messy. And you know what I mean? Like it gives them a nice little text box. And I, what I always do too is I always change the color of this thing. So while it's highlighted as such, come up here in the center, text color, and change it to like a red or something. If okay. you have this, um, you can just copy and paste these. So you just copy and paste, copy and paste. Okay. And what's nice about this, you don't have to do this, okay? But what's nice about it is like the kids can just type in this thing. So when they get this, it's literally going to be this document, and they're going to go, all right, click to add text. Okay, I know I this is I know this is where I put the information. So here I go. Okay, three alternatives. I could have gone to the beach. I could have gone snowmobiling. I could have gone to you know the polar ice caps. Whatever. Okay, so I've got a place where I can, like I said, have these kids fill in some information. This is cool because this is in the gradual release. The we do, right? The we do. They're doing it. They're answering. And you are also checking for, for uh, comprehension and for mastery. Now, in my last class, somebody brought up a cool thing. They said, well, could they just drop a picture in here, right? Because my options, what were my options again? Beach, snowmobiling, or polar ice caps. Could they drop a picture? My other class was like, well, why don't you have them put a picture, make it jazzed up? I was like, that's a good idea. So what, like I said, what you can do is you just go to insert image. And you can upload from the computer. You can search from the web. You can select photos on your on your own, uh, you know, on the uh, clip art, right? But like in my last class, I just went online and grabbed a picture of the beach. Let me put that on here, like that. Okay, good question. So the question was, how did I get these three layers? So what I did, okay, is combine or merge the cells. Just merge them. So then I've got some options there. You see, I merged the last one too. I know, I know there's a lot of stuff, but um, we do have a follow-up session, so you guys can come back. And again, what are we doing right now? We're, we're taking this gradual release thing that I actually usually do in the classroom, right? But we've got to do it distance maybe or virtual. So I'm taking what I know how to do in the classroom and giving it to them online. I think that's a, it's an effective way of doing it, okay? All right, listen, we have our application. Or sorry, we have our feedback form now. I'm going to leave this alone. Are you all good with that? We have, obviously you make it prettier, clean it up, make it more in the future. Like I have in my uh, in my in my real one, I've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. This could be twenty slides. This could be five slides. It's up to you. But this is just an example, okay? All right. So let's do this. Let's get out of here. Everybody got it? Now another thing that too, as soon as you start typing, this thing saves. At some point during this thing, I want to. There's a there's a thing in the gradual release where we check, right? So I need to check formally that they know this stuff, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a quick assessment in the Google Forms. That's what's right here on this video, this little Google Forms. And so at this point, I'm going, hey, guys, pause the video. You've got three questions to answer, okay? Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm doing a 20-minute lesson, I probably don't have a 50-question quiz. So I've got a three short answer uh, drive-by quiz that they can tell, show me that they kind of know what we've done, right? This is the WeCheck part of the gradual release, which is what we're trying to learn today. That's one of our success criteria. Okay, back to Google. Everybody go back to Google. Or go back to your drive, really, is what you should be at. Let me get out of my personal one. Okay, so we're back at the drive. Um, everybody click New. You're going to have to go to More and then Google Forms. What the Google Forms is, is basically the, the quiz, the ability to um, produce a quiz. Okay? So everybody open up Google Forms. Now, my Google Forms should really be similar to what my uh, feedback form was, right? So I'm going to call this Opportunity Cost Assessment. I don't know. Whatever. The same thing. If I click up here in the top left, boom, there's my title. Good. All right, now let's start making some questions. Actually, let's just make one question for time purposes, okay? So my question is going to be real, real, real low on Bloom's taxonomy. What is opportunity 
cost. And now notice over here, I can do multiple choice, check box, drop down, file upload. I can have them upload a picture of a graph. I can do short answer. There's a bunch of stuff I can do. I'm going to do short answer, actually. I'll make them explain that. That won't be low blooms. That'll be kind of like moving up the blooms. Okay? That's a form. Now, once they submit this form, it is going to provide you with responses. What I want to do right now is I want to show you guys how to attach those things that we created into the Google Classroom. Okay? So what we need to do is we need to go to the Google Classroom. Everybody do that real quick. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to click Classwork. Okay? Classwork. So it looks like some people practiced in my last session. That's good. So we're under the Classwork function here. And we're going to click Create. Everybody click Create. Now, you can create this as an assignment. You can create this as material, just like you're sending out a video, you're sending out a PowerPoint. You can send it as a quiz. It doesn't really matter for today. I'm just going to do it as material. Your topic has to be the date. So today's date is, what is it, the 5th? 2020. Let's all enter that. Now, your title can be whatever you want it to be. So opportunity cost. Yeah, topic has to be the date. Opportunity cost, feedback. Form. I don't know. Whatever you want to put there is fine. Okay. This is what's important. And I'll show you in a second why. Okay. Now I'm going fast. I apologize. I want to add what we made or created in our uh, session today. Okay. So everybody click add. Now notice here, you can go to Google Drive. You can go to links. You can go to file. You can go to YouTube. I'm going to go to Google Drive. And the reason why I'm going to go to Google Drive is because recent, here's my stuff. Look at this. Here's my form. And here's my opportunity cost feedback form, my Google form, and my opportunity feedback form on Google Slides. So when I click on this thing, it's going to add it right to the student's assignment. They don't have to search for it. Parents don't have to, you know, haggle them about it. There it is. So when they click on this and they're watching your video, it's going to pull up what we created today. Y'all see what I did there? Pretty cool, right? Now, obviously, this wouldn't be filled in. But, you know, okay, so back to this. Another cool thing is you can uh, go right to YouTube and add your video. So like I have all my videos on YouTube. I just type in my name. All right. And there it is. There's my video. Okay, let's add it. And the kids go, oh, all right, cool. Description. Um, hey, guys, watch this video and, you know, fill in the forms as you go. Make sense? Pretty cool, right? All right. Now, let's do this. If you've done this or you've kept up this far thus far, Let's just save this draft, okay? Save this draft. So here we go. Everybody right now, let's open a new meet. All right? Google.com, open a new meet. Join or start a meeting. Now, don't title this my name because then we'll re-enter my uh, session. Don't do that. Just type your name or do something. Put test AP macro or something, okay? I know I'm running on short time here, but this will go quick. And then go ahead and click continue. Now, you're not going to have a camera. You guys will on the Chromebook, or if you're on your laptop, you might. But uh, go ahead and join it, and you can see I don't have a camera. That's okay. So here I am. That's me. And now what this will let you do is this will allow you to video your presentation. So how do I do that, right? If I go down here with these, um, there's these three little buttons, three little uh, dots. I'm going to click on that. And at the very top of these options, now you can record your meeting. So I click record and then accept and you're live, okay, up here in the record. Now there's a lot of different options for the record. This might be better if I show in a follow-up meeting. But what you can do is you can set it so that you're showing yourself. And I'll show you an option, I mean an uh, uh, example here in a second. You can show it such that you're showing yourself and the window just the window, a tab, there's a lot of options. But I am currently recording right now. So you can make it look, I'll show you in a second here. You can make it look like the presentation that I did on YouTube um, with yourself in there, but also with the PowerPoint or something. So here's an example right here. This is on my tutorial. You can see there's a picture of me right here. And there's a picture of my presentation. Now, in this 
at this point in the video, I wasn't, I didn't have anything up presenting, but like, let's say I wanted to show them supply and demand graphs. I can do it with my video here and the supply and demand graphs here, or my PowerPoint or whatever, right? And again, I have a, um, a tutorial that you guys can use, okay? All right, going back to this, once you're done recording, now we got four minutes, so I'll wrap it up, but once you're done recording, what you're gonna do is go to the same three little dots here and click stop recording, okay? And it says, this recording will be saved in my Google Drive. So that's really cool because what it does is it automatically uploads it to your Google Drive. I shouldn't say automatically because it takes a couple minutes to render. But it's pretty cool, okay? So you just hit stop recording and it goes into your Google Drive. Then guess what? You can go right here and you can attach it onto your uh, 8.5, which is pretty cool. Anyway, listen, I know I threw a lot at you guys. Um, I have video tutorials on this, as I mentioned. I'll get Ms. Elam to send those out or put them onto a, you know, um, the classroom, classroom file folder. Or you can just go to my website, I mean my YouTube link, which is all under Landing Glenn. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Mongero. But our goal today was to figure out how to make some artifacts to integrate into the Google Classroom so we can gradual, gradually release our stuff. And then, of course, to be able to record a video, which I kind of had to expedite that. Okay, but anyway, I hope that helped. I know it was a lot, but we'll have a follow-up next week, okay?